This is uh, Richard back at you. Uh, we got one from uh, Kansas uh, come in today. Uh, we got out, uh, I believe we already made a video of uh, taking it out and uh, letting y'all see the pan and everybody's kind of excited to tear this one down. Me too. So uh, we got our Arizona one done. Uh, we got another Arizona one coming this morning. We want to thank all you uh, people for uh, bringing us uh, your work from out of state and stuff like that. We're getting a lot of them. So uh, if you do bring them, we'll do you a really good job. So let's get this thing apart. I'm excited to see uh, what type of damage we have. <coughs> yeah, it's a 2005 model. So it's going to have an input speed sensor and all that type of stuff too. So I'm excited. Now this has been rebuilt before by, I don't know. But if you come here and look at this old bushing right here, that's a factory GM bushing in this tail housing. But it's been rebuilt before. So it did have a new seal. Uh, the seal, when I knocked it out, it almost fell out on its own, but it, it, uh, we always glue these in no matter what. That way it just secures them staying in and they don't leak that way, so. It's got a rebuilt uh, converter by somebody here. Don't want to mention no names. Now it's got a sticker on this side too, so it's kind of hard to. Foot smells pretty dark. Or dark, don't smell dark, but it looks dark. It smells bad. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah, terrible. Yeah. O rings, I mean, just stink, stink. Just so bell has enough here. Just want to make sure you get these uh, sockets all the way down into the bottom of that bolt because if you ever strip one, they're really tough to get out. Just so bad. Got your two four servo right here that applies your second overdrive band. See if I did anything here. Now it uh, it does have some type of shift kit in it, probably an SK or something like that. Anytime we see this washer right there, we already know. Now it does have the stock. Uh, servo right here that applies the band. It doesn't have a Corvette servo in it. Now if you do put a wide band in there, you cannot put that back in there because uh, it'll uh, apply the band automatically unless you take and grind off the pin right here to set your band clearance. So just remember that on a stock band you can get away with it. Wide band you can't. So they did do some fancy grinding here. We see this on some of the builders out there do that. I, if it's a high horsepower one, I'll do it. Other than that, we don't ever do that. Uh, does have some aftermarket fittings right here. Nothing special. Now it does have the connector that uh, the green and the gray and the, or the brown right here uh, tells me that it's got an input speed sensor in it. So. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is bad. <coughs> this is bad. Huh? <coughs> Here we go. Ta -da. Oh my! Uh, that's pretty messed up, guys. We can climb on that mountain. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, there's, <laughs> I think we can rebuild the tranny with all that metal. Yes, sir. Sure, we probably could. We can melt the back down and make something. How heavy is that filter? I mean, oh, it's heavy. Gosh. Look at that metal coming out of there. Wow. 
I'm surprised this thing moved. He trailered it from Kansas, but I moved it on the lift. Did you really? Yeah. Isn't that pretty? That's kind of, that'd be a pretty paint. Wow. Look at that color. Oh my. Yeah, if you could paint that like that, that's pretty. <laughs> pretty crazy. Okay. Here we go. That gas gets as bad as old as old can be. Probably was never serviced in a long time. <coughs> I'm assuming. I don't even want to put my parts in that. That's so bad. I just have yeah. to lay them here on a rag. Put the bolts and stuff out. <coughs> You notice it does have a seal retainer uh, anytime uh, we put the front seal in we glue the seal and the retainer did you notice how easy that comes off look at that so it's kind of a good idea kind of a bad idea but if you put glue them on there with that yellow glue we use it's a good idea it's a 3m yeah glue. so glue uh, your seal in put a bead all around the seal pop that back on there let it dry and then that seal it's going to take a lot to get that seal out after that yeah. I got some metal in it. I'm gonna have splinters all through my, no, all through my hands. It's not a uh, 65. I think it's not. That just blows me away there, especially the color of the connector. Mm -hmm. That throws me off a little bit. Probably some type of mid year stuff going on. Nope. We'll get in here and it'll probably be half and half of uh, something going on where they put the stator in there without the sensor or something like that. Yes, sir. <coughs> see a lot of that type of stuff. This thing's so contaminated with metal, all the sensors, pillow pad, everything will be replaced on that. There's nothing savable. <coughs> always go for that. <laughs> Even after we get this tranny rebuilt, uh, we'll drop the pan on it. We'll drive it for a little while, get it warmed up, flushed out good, drop the pan on it and do another service on it before we even deliver the unit. Because even me cleaning this as good as I clean, it's hard to get all the microscopic pieces out. But that new transmission fluid will. So we like to get that out right off the bat. That way the customer has, isn't having any type of issue with uh, erratic shifting or anything like that. Just covered in metal. And this thing is just obliterated. Luckily it's got the one that's covered. Yeah, I bet it's still it's junk. Oh yeah. It's wow. junk. We'll go in there and see if our lockup valve has been blocked or anything. It hasn't been blocked or anything. It's just all stock stuff. Go in there and change this up a lot too. So look at all that metal. Look at this. We're going to look into this thing uh, having cooler failure too because a lot of times when these planets fail like this, uh, it's lack of cooling. So we definitely want to look at this stuff really close when we put it back together. Now it has been rebuilt before it looks like. It's got an aftermarket uh, upgrade to the plate right here where the check balls beat through the plate before and they add this little deal in here that'll set the check ball there like that and gets it off, off the plate. So you still want to drill your feed hole, your pressure up hole right here. That way, anytime you drill these out, it does relieve the the hit on the ball on the plate right there. So we'll go back with actually a neoprene ball. Uh, it's a hard Teflon looking ball that uh, doesn't do any damage. I'm gonna have uh, splinters in my hands on this one. Uh, I can imagine.
Now, here's a good example why you want to get rid of your plastic pistons. See this right here? It's all cracked out. And that right there will cause tranny failure. This is your 1 2 accumulator that accumulates uh, the fluid to soften your second gear shift. So once that broke out right there, your second gear shift went to, it's terrible because it leaks by it so bad. Wow. Okay, so that's why we always upgrade to aluminum. This does have a shift kit in it still. You can see the, other, the three springs that they've stuck inside of each other. We still, we like to stack it up to where we get this piston flush. Always raise your piston to the top. You know, so. There's some carnage over there. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of carnage everywhere. Here's your shift kit spring too. Now we'll take and stack a double piston here and block that and get that plumb out of there. That just makes fourth gear so much better. The harness is good. This had no fluid in the connector. So we'll come in here and cut this off and we'll solder in another solenoid into the harness. Uh, that way we can save the harness and stuff. This thing's so contaminated, uh, it's going to take a lot of work to get it clean. Actually, here's a, a complete planetary washer. That was cool. Nick. Let's see, I don't have a... I took all my planets out. Uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this thing's going to be in good shape. Got chunks in the way of the park. There it is. Maybe that'll get it. In. Oh, there we go. This baby got some shrapnel in there. Look at all that. Man, I hate to say it. Maybe you should have worn gloves on this one. You might be picking that out of the on Yeah. Next time I'm going to rinse my hands off, kids. Okay, here we go. Now we're hoping we can save a lot of parts out of this unit because it is such a later design. Uh, mainly the pump, stuff like that. Planetary gears and stuff like that we keep in stock. But these old pumps are getting hard to come by. <coughs> now this is, uh, even the earlier version, it doesn't have no speed sensor, uh, stator, or nothing in there. It's just a, your standard system. <coughs> Now it does have a shift kit uh, pressure spring in it. You can tell by the orange color. We can get in here, see if our pump's wiped out. Feels really good. Crazy how you get all that metal in something and it just doesn't just destroy the pump. Trying to look if this is, you know, I don't know how many miles this ha has on it since it's been rebuilt, but. You can just tell it's already got all the blue in wore off the pump. Slide. A lot of wear up here on top. So it's really hard to say. It does looks like a lot of miles uh, compared to what it has on the rebuild, I guess. It looks rough. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Always want to get your band anchor out of there. That way you can just grab this and pull it. Oh, 
Always want to make sure you have a big hole or small hole here. Well, look at that. Mainly when you're changing parts and stuff, uh, when you get into trouble. Now, even though we see this marking, it, it feels really good. It's more just seeing it, but the drum looks really flat. Don't see any wear in there. It looks like we can probably put the drum back back in. It looks really nice. So we can clean that drum up there and use it back. So look at the reverse clutch here. I like to look for signs to see what they've done to them when I take them apart to, you know, show this been into before. Uh, I like to see signs they put new clutches or bands or anything like that in there. The reverse clutch has got a lot of wear on it. You can see how it starts pushing in the center first on the clutch. That's because it this uh, wave plate right here pushes on the center here. And once it pushes on the center and as it flattens, it rolls out and flattens out on it. So then it covers the clutch. But you can see here, once it starts doing it, uh, it'll just keep doing it. So you just got to replace everything in here. The wave plate's still good, or bevel plate's still good, but just replace all your stuff here. Got a nice little stock uh, band in it. Does have the high, high energy material, but it's still just a stock band. I'm gonna get down in here to the old uh, three fork clutch. Of course, we're missing our load springs. We know that. Sure it's, uh, already got the bacon going on on the clutches there. You can tell these have been on uh, used twice because they've been burned up before and been put on these clutches. Mm -hmm. To get that hot, this clutch ain't been that hot yet, so you can tell this has been reused again. They just put clutches in there. No load springs though. We'll put load springs back in it and get that part straightened up. And we do have our clutches and everything in installed properly, got the wave, the steel, and the clutch. That's normal. Engine brake clutch. Hard to tell if it's new or, or OEM. It's hard to tell on these there, so. Look for wear here. See how that reverse clutch is starting to wear here even? Mm -hmm. It's got a dip in it. So this drum to us is no good. We'll have to replace it. Because once that starts happening, it lets the clutch start egg shaping around it like that instead of spinning straight and it'll keep doing that even with the new clutch. And that seal's nicked. Is it nicked? Uh, second one down. Keep going, keep going, keep going somewhere. I thought, maybe not. Oh, right there. Maybe Isn't that nicked barely. right there a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Looks like it is. Yeah, it is. You can see it. Mm -hmm. Not all the way through, but yeah, it did nick it. I'll show you what we use to put them seals on with. We use uh, this thing here, we'll slide over it. We'll put the seal on that way. And then we'll size it with this one first. And then we come in with this one here and then resize it all the way back. Once we get that done, uh, we'll have our pump already rebuilt. And then uh, once we size it with this, we'll take and put our pump stator on there, spin it around. That way we know our bushing's good here. We know our bushing's fitting good here. And we just made sure that we're not going to cut any seals here. Like that. Nice. And that's what the, this is the, what we use. Now, when you, everybody always asks me, how do you put these seals on? Here's another one right here. We use this, it goes over it like that. We slide the seal on like that. We'll take this one, 
size it like that and then we'll take our green one and then we'll put it on there sizes it even farther set it on there about 30 40 minutes before we even take and put it in the tranny that way we know we don't cut these rings you cut these you lose reverse so if you cut any of the other ones you lose forward or third so i actually had a customer call and tell me man i ain't got no third gear i ain't got no third gear he said everything looks good in the drum and stuff everything looks good but what he did was he cut this ring right here if you cut this ring right here you won't have no third gear so you got to remember that too there's the third gear oil pushes a band off that's your accumulator instead of using one of these See, if you ever look in a 406E700, they have no 2-3 accumulator. It's because they use the band push-off for the accumulator. So. Definitely know that. Yeah. So I say, well, where's my accumulator? Well, there ain't one. What do you mean there's not one? There's not one. Can you see that, Trent? Mm, to the side right over here. Yeah, okay. Yep. Look at you. Got First me grab. some new snap on, or, or macro, excuse me, pliers here. Them are nice. Yeah, Robert might hear you for saying that. Yeah, he might. <laughs> <laughs> now we got a wear here on our hub already. The planet does show to be good. I want to look at this seal right here. Make sure our seal's good. Because this seal right here, if it's bad or anything, see that lube hole right there? This tranny uh, lubricates from front to rear. So if this hole gets plugged up or this seal blows out, uh, this hole right here is what lubricates the, all the planetary stuff in the back. So if that seal is sitting on there like that and it breaks or anything, all your oil falls out and it doesn't lubricate in the back. So and it burns everything up in the very back of the tranny. So the early designs was a hard plastic and this center piece would break out and cause all kinds of failures on the 700s and stuff like that. They went to this the 4L60s and stuff, and this is kind of a really soft. It doesn't ever get hard where it can break. So, I don't know if I can get this off in here. You mainly want to look here for wear. You can be good here, but be war plumb out here. We've noticed that the roller bearing hubs seem to be a lot softer, and they do uh, have wear issues right through here. So you think you got a good hub. It's not to you check here. We put a new one in every one. So here's a brand new one. No wear. So. That's pretty. Same way with your shell, you want to check here for any wear on the splines or anything. Even if it's war or not war, we replace these and get these out of here. We always go with a hardened one. So. And you can see the difference here. What they look like from hardened and non-hardened. Down so I get the rest of this out. This is where our carnage is going to be, folks. It looks pretty rough in there already. Yeah, let Seeing me get this some, out uh, really quick. This is down in there. didn't blow the sprag up, the sprag's still turning one way and locking, but it'll have to be replaced, the race is war plumb out on it. 
But, uh, oh, I just had it. Plus, right out here. I'm trying to see if it. A lot of times it'll split these, but these are the hardened ones, so you don't see it as much. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Fell right out. I would say we have an issue here. It is gone. And of course you get into the planetary. Oops. Oh wow. You don't see that too often. This thing is driven beyond driven. Oh but my. It's going to fall It's taking a lot to get this thing back together. But we have all the parts here to do it. Uh, it's going to be an exciting one to build. A lot of time and hours is going to be put in this thing to get it back to where it needs to be. So if y'all need anything, give us a holler at Precision Transmissions. Y'all have a great day.